We're talking about what's new at the 2017 Toronto Auto Show. Get your questions ready today on the Lemonade Car Show. <laughs> I'm Lorraine Sommerfeld, and this is the Lemonade Car Show. Today is our Toronto Auto Show special, and also our resident mechanic will be here to answer any of your car-related questions in our Ask a Mechanic segment. Lemonade is brought to you by OMVIC, that's Ontario's vehicle sales regulator, and we're produced by the Automobile Protection Association. The APA fights for you, the consumer, and provides information and news on all parts of the industry. Visit our website at apa.ca or reach us by phone at 416-204-1444. Joining me today is Ron Corbett. He's a staff writer at the APA, and J.P. Ostagai, he's the senior manager of retail operations with the Alta Automotive Group. <laughs> we'll be fault. taking your calls at 888-764-3778. Okay, I got you two dancing clowns here when the music <laughs> plays. <laughs> Such a catchy tune. I, it, it is catchy. I will give it that. The little dude behind us in the monitor. Toronto Auto Show. You were there with me, so I know you were there. Yes. JP, you were down there. I was down there. You've been. Yep. Just before we came on air, we were talking about favorite shows, or favorite car at the show, and we all said the same car, <laughs> which is probably the first time that has ever happened, I think. The Volvo Wagon. Nice Beautiful. Car. Beautiful. Really nice. Gorgeous. The R design. Is that V90, what it is? Yeah. Okay, it's what's the, its proper name? The uh, V90 R design. Okay. Wagon. I, I don't have a photo of it. You can Google it. Everybody, yeah, go to the auto show and you can go see it there. Blue. It's really, Blue. really nice. Yeah. Why is it that wagons, I wrote a column about wagons last week, got tons and tons of mail. Something about station wagons just nestles in our hearts. I don't know Nostalgia. what it is. I think it is. And the new ones don't look like the old ones no they're the crossover of the future the, you know people don't want you know the van still exists mm -hmm. but and the crossover for multiple families are very popular some people like the the idea of the more versatility of a, of a station wagon especially if it's all-wheel drive yeah well, especially if it if it looks like a car yeah <clears throat> and you know something like that is is very elegant and the europeans are still doing a large number of those Mercedes as the E-Class, BMW usually does a 5 Series wagon. And so um, they're, you know, they're really nice. It's a very big segment in Europe, like the, a lot of them are sold. So, you know, to make a few thousand or whatever for North America, it's not a problem. Do you think it'll grow here as a segment or do you think it it's saturated what it's going to be? We've seen more, especially in the luxury market, we've seen more and more ads for different companies. Uh, Volkswagen's coming out with one, Audi's always pushing theirs, Mercedes. We see a lot more segmentation, kind of bringing it back. Just as a, a, an alternate to, for an SUV, they're less expensive than SUVs mm -hmm. in their same se in their same segment. And sedans are kind of hitting the crapper. Like they're uh, everything goes in stages, right? Yeah. So they, they will come and they will go. People still looking for fuel economy will still find a sedan <clears throat> or a small car better than an SUV or crossover. It's like it's like the minivan that was a really big hype, and now people have, have you know got tired of that, and now they're into the three-row SUVs, and um, eventually you'll probably go back to cars. We've seen places like GM or Chrysler go all in on the minivan again after a lot of people pulled out, like Ford kissed yeah. goodbye and left. And the Pacifica has been there. They've been ringing that bell for almost a year now on it. And the Pacifica is very cool. It's all got all the tech, tons and tons of tech. It's also very pricey. And well, it's competitor against you know the the Sienna and the Odyssey, it's which are the also top end. Top yeah, end be very and they are, that that price warrants the competition, mm -hmm. but they also have some less expensive ones as well. Yeah. So they're a good mix. And as a people mover, there's nothing more comfortable on a long trip than, than yeah, a, if than a have, minivan. If you have four adults to move, there's 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 no other way to go. I've been emceeing some uh, right. panel things at the auto show, some talks, and one of them was we were, we were talking about minivans and every single person on the panel all of it's all colleagues and people that I work with and people write to us and call us and say I need this 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 and this but I don't want a minivan <laughs> and you've you heard it minivan. you've heard yeah. it everything is I don't want a minivan and you go through their list with them and you come down and the final line is always so go buy a minivan yeah <laughs> there's, there's only so much a crossover can do it doesn't have the back space That's, unless you get into the giant crossovers and then then you're into e a e whole different even program. then you know you, there's a big compromise between passenger space and, and cargo and usually on those things if you put up the third row 
you know, th there's virtually no no uh, no cargo space left at all. Well, that's and the minivan you can put six, you know, six big adults in it and all their luggage, and everyone's really happy. So most of the crossovers nowadays are five plus two. They're not really full seven. There is a couple yeah. of seven passengers yeah. out there. If you're if your rule of thumb is if you're if you're transporting f more than five people more than thirty percent of the time, minivan's probably the better way. Mm -hmm. Well, I try and tell people it's not for the rest of your life. Like, go in phases. Yeah. And, and we're also discussing this, is that a lot of us overbuy. We buy, we picture oh, the one week a year, the two weeks a year, and then we buy the vehicle for that. And then you, you drive around car. empty. You can rent a car for that. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that, you can rent a minivan. Yeah, you're, you're buying something for that that uh, two weeks a year when you go to PEI. Yeah. Well, you know, just, just you know, buy a Civic and then and rent something rent for something. the trip, right? And, well, I was joking when I wrote the call last week about station wagons with my dad. It was just in case because he liked to shop by the side of the road. So if people threw things away that needed a new home, which would mean at our house, <laughs> my dad needed to just in case be able to bring home whatever. So we had to have station wagons. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everything. I, I can't believe it. And honestly, he, when he went to a smaller car, like a little A to B to get to work car, someone who ran him, he left it in the road and walked home. <laughs> 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 so angry. It's like, forget it, you like the station wagon. So I learned to drive on a huge station wagon, and that's another topic we're talking about is kids. We're talking about minivans. But if you've got kids who are 12, 13, 14, they're probably going to end up learning how to drive in that vehicle. So you don't want to put them into a high-end rocket. Like, well, and also something that's that's huge, right? That's and autonomous hard. driving features. You want to learn without autonomous driving features. But how can you get around that now? That's a really good segue. Everything now is loaded in just about. And I, I find we've got part of the population, my age up probably, who are going, I don't want this stuff, yeah. I don't want to use it. And kids going, I can't wait to yeah. use all so this stuff. So all cars have the ability to turn a lot of these or dampen a lot of the sensors mm -hmm. on them. So when you're teaching someone how to drive for the first time, it's really important that you dampen uh, that it they can't learn by sensors alone. Ice yeah. storm. I was driving along when we had that big snowstorm. Yeah. The Ford camera and the Ford crash mitigation yeah, stopped in go. my car. They go so if you're worrying about, about it, you're not. Well, uh, on the the BMW 5 Series, the new one, they actually have a heating element built into the sensor, so it, it can melt the snow and ice. So so the thing. Well, I know they're trying operative. to overcome. They're putting little. Um, drop doors on some of the cameras and things like that. I know the Elantra yeah. that's all loaded up has that. But like JP said, I was on the highway a month ago and within a few minutes, the front, the collision avoidance is gone. And they yeah. tell you, which yeah. is good, but you can't rely on it. And no. we all know the backup cameras are and, re and realistically, all you have to do is t tap your thing and that warning is off the, off the screen. So, you know, you have a little like on, but it's still important to teach people how to drive properly without autonomous features. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, well, yeah. well, I'm hopeful. What well, a lot I... <laughs> well, it's like lane, I call lane departure text assist. I mean, if actually it's not happening with me. But it is, because you see people texting, and if they drift, which is lane departure, do -do, it's, oh, crap, okay. Well, some cars, you can actually let the car drive itself. It, it'll just do this. They've actually taken the sensors and moved them out farther, so it actually drifts farther, so it's less likely to be soft. <laughs> so it's like drunk assist. Drunk We're going assist. even past text yeah. assist into drunk assist. The, the tech is good, but I think, do you both agree we're in the flux, like we're in this middle stage of mm -hmm. things? Oh yeah, absolutely. And we think we're in the top end of everything, but I think we're in this zone. Well, the whole, the whole idea of these features is, is of course, to, to make everything safer. But it's also with less and less people uh, who are growing into the driving age are not driving anymore. They're not getting licenses, they're using public transportation, so the car companies are actually using these features to entice, with a technical space world, to entice people back to drive. I wish they would entice them into driving lessons. And I mm. wish they would make us get retested more frequently. Mm -hmm. And I wish we wouldn't fight back against that. Well, if they, if they made, worked with the insurance companies to make sure they got a better rate, mm -hmm. if they did go through it and a higher and a higher standard, it would be better for everybody. But you know what's tough with insurance, and I'll have Deb on here in a couple of weeks probably, is that those are razor thin margins. Oh, I know. So, and if they, if I say to you, put on winter tires, you get five percent back off your insurance or whatever the number is, it's like, EPK, <laughs> what's five yeah. percent gonna do? But again, it's safety. So I want people to want this stuff for safety reasons, like and, you mentioned, and the cost of, as well, because you put winter tires, you both set the tires last longer. Oh yeah. So yeah. your cost involved is actually less than is, is a lot more than five percent. You're preaching the choir here. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen more and more. Winter tires on Actually, the yeah, that's true. A lot, yeah. lot of I, I like yeah. the sort of the the, the 
the winter camo look without the hubcaps and stuff. I love it. Yeah, it looks Black really rims. Good. Yeah. So tough, like so cool. It makes me happy. And plus, I know you have winter tires on, which is the other thing, is because I need to know if you're going to be able to stop. So, so why is it that people with winter tires think they can drive faster? No, they don't. <laughs> Some might, but most people that bother to do the investment and go through the hassle are already being cautious, I would say. It's the idiots who say, I'm such a great driver. I'm totally cool. I don't need it. It's a waste of time. It's a money grab and all the rest of it. So I actually think the people putting them on, generally speaking, are not those people. You really need a quiet car, too? You have to be quiet oh, now. The Lemonade quiet? Car Show okay. brought to you by Avic, Ontario's motor vehicle sales regulator, returns after this short break. When we come back, we'll be taking your calls, 888-764-3778.